that's probably looks a little edgy for them for their age. The alternative is that they're a smart kid and they're just um, exposed to mainstream stuff, and then they have to internalize their sociopathic uh, like schism from society. <laughs> like that, they'll just. I, when I was nine years old, I started realizing everyone was a robot. I, I, I became obsessed. I thought the world was a, a some game that God was playing with me, and everyone was Are fake. You serious? Uh, I was wow. losing my mind. I, I don't think you're that far off, really. That's incredible. Yeah. And I think that's a that's a thing that happens. I think, you know, we all go through that. Yeah. If you yeah. haven't, you will. Everyone's a robot. You're the only real person. Probably the whole thing's a giant test. Probably got time for. But if you read Douglas Adams questions. or something at that age, then you'd go, oh, okay, maybe this world's real because this guy's talking about what I'm talking about. Yeah. We're back here by the Morty Amorphous Head. Man, oh, it up. Oh, come on. God, there God. we go. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. So, my question to you is, why did you choose to narrate the court case using Rick and Morty's voice? <laughs> <laughs> This guy. Well, I mean, like Harmon, you we found just, it. Somebody, the, somebody sent it to me in a text, and I, I, I read the transcript, and I thought it was just bad comedy. I thought it was somebody wrote a bad hack, like comedy thing. And then I researched it, and it was real. It was a real court case. And then we brought. I, I was obsessed with it, so I came into the writers' room, and I read it with. One, one other writer, writer. One of the writers. I think Jane. Jane yeah. Uh, she read the. She read one part, and I read the other part, and we were just going back and forth. And all the other writers are cracking up just at just because if you just read that transcript, it's, it's insane. insane. And insane. then Justin came in while we were reading it, and then that was yeah. It was like and super, Harmon, I mean, we were super busy, but Harmon was like, if you can, if you can just find time to like just record this, and I was like, absolutely. Effing lutely. <laughs> Erica Hayes, who works so fast and clean, like as a storyboard artist, we knew, you know, that, that, that she was able to create just storyboards that flowed with it. Yeah, I mean, it was really, if you look at it, it's really, I think Erica did like maybe 10 panels, you know, across that whole like nine minute or however long it is thing. Uh, and it just works so well. But yeah, it was just, it was hilarious. We didn't actually know if oh, we shit. were going to be able to show it to anybody because it was like what are we going to do with this like we made it and it was kind of like well what can we do with this yeah uh, I'm, not, I'm not complaining but so we don't get to meet stan lee i thought, I thought <laughs> they said stan lee's i want to meet stan lee i thought he was i thought he was i thought he was going to be out here you thought, you, like, right you thought now. he was moderating your panel and yeah, you're like guess. guess what you got the comic book man no, 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 no you're not, great not, yeah no, 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 sorry no, to disparage you no 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 i think i think we do oh, i think no, we, should i think everyone here gets to meet stan lee right and in, in, in a spiritual sense okay right? like we're all kind of this is we're in stan's house right now he's 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 orbiting the earth in a special uh uh medical platform to cope with cameo fatigue he has a <laughs> he has a rare disorder called cameo fatigue <laughs> We, we, we love him. The weirdest thing about that transcript, too, is that, like, I did it, we went to, for a tour of the Rick and, Rick and Morty studios yesterday. It looks like the most fun place to work ever. I don't know if that's the case. No, it's fun, yeah. Like, there, there was a dude in, like, full wizard garb, like a robe or a wizard hat. It, it's strange. But, okay, we got one minute. Um, but, like, that guy's I, been fired. And I rewatched the. Uh, oh! Yeah, yeah, that was, that was the last day. I was like, all right. No more wizards. I rewatched the court thing, and like afterwards, I was like, "That's somebody's real life. Like that's a guy saying that to a judge, and the judge arguing back. Like yeah. how bizarre is that? Yeah. Like, how crazy is it that the judge gets sucked I mean, into the? There's a point where the judge becomes the aggressor. It's, yeah. like, a, it's yeah. like a Breakfast Club thing. He's yeah. like, yeah. That's, for your that's exactly your natural point in life. It's a really good. That is exactly what happens. It's like you get the horns bender. It's like all of a sudden the the guy with all the power suddenly is down in the dirt with you. So how how is, the, how is the dirty guy not the hero in that case? If you can get an elitist to get down in the mud with you, yeah. by any means necessary, right? Yeah. You got one more question, mate? We got time for one more. We got time for one more. Make it a good one, my friend. Right here. Oh, cool. Hi. Hi. Will uh, my buddy bird person be back in season three? Whoa. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. This may not be a good season for bird person. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's all we're going to say. That is all. No, actually, well, no, no, that is all we're going to say. I oh, almost said on. something, but like, no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Bird person's, Trust me, you'll thank me. You'll thank me when you watch it yourself. Bird person's residuals have been unfavorable. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting a high sign, so everyone, Justin Warren and Dan Hart. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. Peace and love, world.
that the parents could be bummed about. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>